There's been a lot of talk about electric cars recently. Some people have been wondering about the possibility of changing from internal combustion, you know, normal cars, to some newfangled electric job. Well, I'm here to look at the factors that could help you decide. So I'm going to start by paraphrasing motoring presenters from around the globe by asking, what is it like to drive? Well, I'm driving an electric car now. This is the Nissan Leaf. I'm travelling at the same speed as other road users and I'm warm, comfortable and dry. To be honest, my immediate impression is, what's the big deal? It's exactly the same as driving any other automatic, except it's quieter. Of course, it's not that simple. Any new technology is bound to cause anxiety. And when it comes to electric cars, the biggest worry for potential drivers is, will it run out of electricity? That's not surprising, as for generations now, we've been driving along, stopping at a petrol station like the one behind me, filling up the tank and carrying on. At the moment, an electric car doesn't have the same range on one battery charge as its petrol and diesel cousins do on a tank of fuel. But that needn't be as big a deal as you might think. It all depends on how far you drive each day. Research suggests that 95% of our car journeys are under 100 miles. The average trip is under 9 miles and the average daily total is 25 miles. This car has an advertised range of around 100 miles on a single charge. So statistics suggest that most motorists could use one of these without changing their driving habits. So there's no need to panic about being stranded at the side of the road with a flat battery. And if you do buy an electric car, but you don't fancy using it to drive from your home in Cornwall to visit your auntie Morag in Aberdeen, well, you can always rent a regular fuel car for the weekend. Or, preferably, take the train, which can be a much better option. It's also important to remember that a lot of UK households already have two cars, so an electric car makes the perfect second car. The other big grey area for electric cars is cost. At the moment, electric cars do cost more than their petrol or diesel equivalents. Sure, they're getting cheaper and there are government subsidies available, but one thing is for certain, this is not a cheap car to buy. It's not cheap to buy, but it is cheap to run. Let me explain. At the moment, there's no road duty payable on an electric car. Zero road duty. There's no congestion charge if you go into the centre of London. Zero C charge. And it costs about 3p a mile to drive. 3p a mile. Of course, knowing it only costs 3p per mile is no good unless we know how much it costs to drive the equivalent petrol or diesel car per mile. Well, at current pump prices, the very best you can do is about 9p a mile for a really tiny economic diesel. 9p per mile. A five-door hatchback the same size as this electric car will cost about 12p per mile. And that is if it is the most economic diesel model. So that works out at 9p more for every mile you drive. Multiply that up by 10,000 miles and you're looking at a saving of £900 on fueling the electric car. For businesses, there are also tax incentives. It's complicated, but it can add up. It's not just the purchase price that matters. So how would it work on a fleet of vehicles? Now these electric vans make perfect sense for this council delivering services to their local area. They follow the same route every day and then return back in the evening to be recharged. Meaning that conversion to electric power can easily be achieved with minimum changes to business operations. They simply charge the vans at the base, then they go out and do their job, then return and recharge overnight. Plus, with the right investment in infrastructure, they could generate a lot of their own electricity. For example, solar panels on the roof of the depot. 
Another big factor to consider is reliability and the costs involved in keeping the car on the road. This car boasts an internal combustion engine and it's a fantastic bit of modern engineering with over 400 moving parts that need constant lubrication. It's also got pumps, fans and radiators to cool it. This car's got a clutch, a gearbox, an exhaust pipe, a catalytic converter. I could go on. Basically, there's lots of bits on it that can go wrong. Now, normally we're completely unaware of that, but we're often reminded of the complexities of our cars when it comes time to take them in for a service or repairs. I have been known to break down in tears when I've had a bill from my local garage. It's embarrassing. Now, this car's electric motor has got one moving part. This car's also got no oil filter because there's no oil, there's no fuel injection system because there's no fuel, there's no exhaust pipe, no catalytic converter because it doesn't need one. Basically, there's a lot less to go wrong. So if this car is so much more simple than this one, how come it costs so much more? Well, let me explain. Now, this is why. Underneath here is an electric car battery. Essentially, it's the same technology as is in your laptop or mobile phone, except, well, it's a lot bigger. And it's specifically designed to work in a car. Now, at the moment, electric car batteries are made in relatively small numbers, so they're still a little bit pricey. Of course, it's easy to understand that the more they sell, the more they make, and the more the price will drop, and the more the technology will develop. The batteries in this car are already a huge step change in technology, and they're going to get smaller, lighter, and more efficient. How do we know this? Well, anyone old enough to remember the first generation of mobile phones will recall that the batteries were really heavy and they didn't last very long. Unlike the first generation of electric cars, which were slow and didn't go very far on a charge, this car is like the first smartphone. It really is a totally different experience. You may also have noticed that the price of petrol and diesel doesn't tend to go down very often, and that's unlikely to change. I've been driving electric cars for a couple of years now, and while it's true I'm very keen on them for the obvious benefits they bring, I'm also very aware that they're not suitable for everyone. Only you will know if making the transition from oil to volts is possible or sensible for you. If it is, you'll be joining a small but rapidly growing group of 21st century pioneers. If you're still undecided, you might want to watch the further two films on this website, in which I'll give you more info and practical tips on electric motoring.